Idaho Falls Pediatrics, where you supporting kids in our community and seven questions with Emmy. Hey guys, welcome back to seven questions with Emmy. Today I'm here talking with Mac Wilberg. Did I get it? You did. Okay. <laughs> he is a musical director of the Tabernacle Choir in, at Temple Square, and he is also a composer, music arranger of the beautiful of beautiful music, and has performed all over the world. Mac, thank you so much for talking with me. Well, thank you. I'm honored to be with you. Thank you. Are you, you ready to get started with the question? Sure. Question number one. How did you get your job as a conductor of the Tabernacle Choir? Well, that's a good question. And... Uh, all I can say is that I, I have been a musician since I was very, very young. I started playing the piano by ear when I was probably a little, about four years old. And I've just, I've just studied and studied and studied, and I, and I continue to study, even at my age. Uh, uh, Which is probably and, like 22, right? Oh, you, well, you're, you're being <laughs> kind. But uh, uh, just developing trying to develop whatever talents I had. Yeah. Question number two. What is the best part about your job? Oh, definitely the best part is uh, making beautiful music with wonderful people and then sharing it with wonder, wonderful people throughout the world. Yeah. We watch music in the spoken word every Sunday. Oh, thank you. Every thank Sunday you. morning. Well, we appreciate that. We always appreciate our viewers now and, I can. and tuning in. Now I can watch it and say, I know him. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well we, we hope that you continue to, to watch it throughout your life, really. We definitely it's, will. It's, it's, it's amazing that that program has been on the air 95 years, which is really yeah. uh, a, a record. Yeah, and it will go on for more years. Well, that's what we years. hope, yes. Can you explain how someone gets into the choir and what responsibilities they have as a singer? Yes. Auditioning for the choir is a pretty rigorous process and it takes a couple of months actually from beginning to the to the final part of the audition. And the reason for that is is because the choir and the orchestra perform between 3 and 400 pieces of music a year. Yeah. And, and, and we do so with very little rehearsal. So it's important that not only people have beautiful voices or that they play their instruments well, but that also that they have the skills so that they can, they can uh, create the music very, very quickly. Yeah. Question number four. In addition to conducting the choir, you also arrange and write music. Where do you get the ideas and how long does it take you? Well, that's an interesting question, and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, much of the time I get my inspiration doing what you would call rather ordinary things, whether it be mowing the lawn or sweeping the floor or doing the dishes. Uh, it's interesting how inspiration works, and uh, I never discount uh, any inspiration that, that I re receive, if you can call it inspiration. But sometimes great ideas come in doing rather ordinary things. Yeah, they do. It's true. Like sometimes I'll just be like, like playing dolls or like sitting in my room, and I'll like, oh, I should interview this person right. or something exactly. like that. And exactly. Exactly. I run up to mom or dad and like, can you put this person on the list? Well, I've I've heard I've I've read many, many thoughts of, of very creative people, and they say, if you sit around waiting for the inspiration to come, it probably will never come. We're here in the beautiful Tabernacle. How did the Tabernacle Choir get started, and how has it grown over the years? The Tabernacle Choir, can, I think, can uh, trace its roots to the very first settlers who arrived here in the Salt Lake Valley in 1847. And at that time, the, the, the leader, of the church asked that a choir be organized to sing just days after arriving here. And then over the years, uh, a, a choir continued, but it became officially the Tabernacle Choir when the tabernacle that we're sitting in right now was, was completed. And therefore, the name Tabernacle Choir was born. 
You probably have a lot of really cool moments as you conduct the choir. Can you share with me one or two special experiences? Well, I think every time I stand in front of the choir and the orchestra is a, a special experience for me. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work, but it's a special experience. But one, one or two things that more recently that I remember that from recent uh, experiences is two years ago for our Christmas concert. Uh, as you know, the Tabernacle Choir is quite large, but yeah. we did one piece, which was, we did a cappella, which means that we did it without any accompaniment. And the choir came and, and uh, almost surrounded me while we sang that song. And it was wonderful to be able to look, look in their faces in, in uh, a very much more intimate way than I normally can, because usually I'm quite far from them. Yeah. But to, to see their, to, to see their faces, to feel their, the spirit of their music making, it was a special moment for me. And I think in one other that happened just here in the Tabernacle is, is was during a recording session when we were recording uh, uh, the great oratorio Messiah by Handel. And we were recording at that time the final chorus from uh, Messiah, which ends with this magnificent Amen. And there was something special about that moment that I will never forget. Yeah. Do you get to pick all of the songs that they sing? I do. That's really great. Really yeah, cool. it is. It's it's sometimes it's rather daunting to 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 do that, but yes, I I have that I have that special opportunity. Yeah. Question number 7. I'm from Idaho and we are known for our famous <clears throat> potatoes. Have you ever performed in Idaho and what is your favorite way to have a potato? Oh, I've I've performed personally in Idaho several times and I, I remember at least once or maybe twice where the choir has also been in Idaho and uh, and I know many people from Idaho. My wife taught school actually at Bonneville High School in Idaho Falls many years ago. I know where ago. that is. And uh, I've had many students and I think we have many members of the choir and the orchestra who also uh, trace their roots through Idaho. So we know that Idaho is a very special place. And what's your favorite way to have a potato? Well, I hate to admit it, but it's probably the most unhealthy way of eating a pota potato, but I love French fries. Me too. And you know, you can't have too many of them. Yeah. Because, but I, I mean, a potato is great almost in any way, but French fries, I have to say, I have a weakness for. Okay, so I have a couple bonus questions. Yes. Now. Okay, the first bonus question is, who decides what music, well, th oh wait, sorry. Okay, who decides what music the choir performs at general conference? Is that also you? I, I make recommendations, and then it's ultimately the first presidency who approves the music, based they, on my recommendations. And sometimes, sometimes we make their changes made. Do you do they usually approve it though? They do usually approve it. Yeah, because yes. you probably you pick good ones from well, one, what I've we try. We try. <laughs> okay, the bonus question number two is: What is your favorite song to conduct, and do you have any future songs that you're working on? Well, I always say I get this question quite often, and I always say that it's you, my favorite piece of music is the one that I'm working on at the moment, whether I'm conducting it or whether I'm writing it, because it's the thing that's the, 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 that's the most present to me at the time. And uh, so I don't really have any favorites, fav favorites per se, but uh, always, always working on something. Yeah. Do you have a piece of advice that you can share with me? Yes, I think my, my piece of advice to you and to everybody else is to find something that you really love doing and that you're passionate about. And it doesn't have to be your profession, but it can be something, whether it is a great appreciation for music or, or uh, enthusiasm for a sport of some kind or uh, reading great literature. There are all sorts of things that one can be passionate about. And I think it's important to have something like that in your life that that brings joy and happiness to you. So I have a little gift for you. Oh, thank you. So you can open it right now. You don't have to wait till Christmas. Oh, good, <laughs> good. Oh, I know, I know what this is. It's an Idaho yeah. buddy. Yeah, oh, well this will, 
I know exactly where I'll put this, and where? I'll always think of you when I look at this. Where are you going to put it? Well, I have, I actually, I could either put it in my office here in the tabernacle, or I could put it, I have a special place at home where I could put it. So I'm going to decide which place to put it. Yeah. But thank you very much. You can't eat it, though. <laughs> well, I, 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 won't, I don't want to eat it. I want, yeah, I want it sitting so there cute. so I can remember. There's more stuff oh. in there. <laughs> There sure is. There's a card. So there's a thank you card, and then a business card, and then oh. usually when I do my Zoom interviews, I have a big light box in the background. Yes. But since we're doing an in-person interview, it says your name, and then it you, there's this button, and it lights up oh, when how, you press it. Oh, that's on. great. That is really great. And thank then you. there's a seven questions pen in there. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for talking with well, me. Well, thank you. The pleasure's been mine. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, new seven questions and interviews are posted every Thursday. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Love you guys. Bye. Idaho Falls Pediatrics, proud of you supporting kids in our community and seven questions with Emmy.